Welcome back to the gun dungeon guys. Got a cool old looking gun here, but it's not old at all. This is a brand new Cimarron Model P 1873 clone. Now, it, they say that it's compatible with Colt parts, but I don't know. I don't own any Colt single action armies, but man, they look cool and they feel good. And this design is one of the most naturally pointing guns for me that I've ever had in my hand. This one is chambered in 357 Magnum blasphemy i know but i actually want to shoot this thing and it's going to be a lot more cost effective to shoot 38 which is what i've been shooting out of it today and 357 versus 45 colt so i've been shooting some uh fairly warm 158 grain these are coated rounds these are hand loads everything here is hand loads except for the 357 uh, i've got some uh, some wad cutters here powder puff loads and some pretty soft shooting lead round nose here these are 158 grain as well and we've got some 357 Magnum Federal 158 grain Hydroshock. Haven't shot any of those yet, so we'll see. So this is the 1873, what they call the old model. And how you'll, how you'll notice that just by looking at it is you'll have a screw here in your frame for your main pin that your cylinder rotates on. And your ejector will be what they call a bullseye. Hopefully you can see it. It's a full circle here. Whenever you get to the Model P, what they called pre-war models, it had the push button to take your main pin out, and it had the half moon style ejector. Other than that, I think the grips were a little different, but other than that, it's pretty well the, the same guns. Now I'll say this, I left some dead rounds in here so you can see, on ejecting mine, it kinda, the, the rod wants to stick just a little, the ejector rod but it's starting to get better the more I mess with it. So hopefully that works itself out. It just feels a little gritty, uh, like it hangs up a little bit there towards the end. Cool thing about this model, I don't know if it goes for the pre-war models, but we got C, O, L, T. You've got the four click action on some of the Cimarron's I've seen reviewed, they had a safety in the firing pin that was mounted in the hammer. And you can see how that firing pin is right on the hammer. And the safety was that it would recess. Well, this one doesn't have that. Even with the trigger pulled or not pulled or whatever, when you take the cylinder out, that firing pin is there. So because of that, I do it the old style way on loading it. The six shot essentially becomes a five shot because Go ahead and show you, go to half cock, then open your gate. I'll get five rounds here. I'm gonna load one, skip a hole, load four. Make sure they're all the way in there. Now when I load that one, I'm gonna go ahead and close the gate all the way back, all the way forward, and now I'm on a dead cylinder. So, we've got her loaded up here. Let's just go ahead and take a few shots, see how we can do. Oh, missed the whole target. Click. I've noticed that if I don't pay attention, just the way that this trigger is, if I don't pay attention, I will shoot left hard if I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. So let's go ahead and knock these out. See that sticks just a little. Kind of aggravating really. But hopefully it works itself out. There we go. So not very bad recoil. And like I said, those are 38s, but they are loaded kind of warm. Let's pop some of these sim or these wad cutters in here. These things out of anything else I shoot them in, they are like shooting 22s powder puff little loads but super fun there's our five close the gate all the way back all the way forward single action armies you always want to go all the way back and all the way forward never go back forward from half cock some you can some you can't Your better practice is just to do them all the same way <laughs> that little thing will shoot. All right, so it is 
357 Magnum time. Let's see. It's two, three, and four. Let's see how this thing handles these 357s. These are fairly warm loads for factory loads. All right. Oh, you can tell a difference. You can tell a big difference. Oh, lays a whooping on that steel too. So I know I didn't mention it, but this is the four and three quarter inch barrel model. The barrel's flush with your ejector housing here. One thing I'll say about this, the way that this screw design is in the old model, after you shoot it a little bit, you better reach up and make sure that it's in there. This one has a slot for a screwdriver, but it's also knurled on the sides so that you can hand tighten it. All I've done so far is hand tighten it. I'm sure if I was to hit it with a screwdriver, it would probably stay a little better. Not something you want to lock tight or anything like that because you have to take it out in order to remove the cylinder for cleaning. But yeah, that thing is a little bit loose once you get done shooting sometimes, not too bad. There's quite a few threads, so it ain't gonna, like it's gonna get loose and then automatically fall out. Just keep checking it. I don't know if you noticed in some of the up close footage, like in the intro, but this thing really has some pretty color case hardening on it. For a clone, that's beautiful. I mean, this is an Italian made gun. Pretty sure it's made by you, Birdie, but it doesn't say that anywhere on it. It just says Cimarron on the top, Fredericksburg, Texas, manufactured, yeah, it does actually, manufactured by AU Birdie, Italy. Sorry, I didn't see that before. It actually does say it. Uh, but yeah, this thing, the fit and finish, I can't complain about. The grips feel good. They're slicker and snot, especially if it's, it's hot and humid out here, so I'm sweating. If your hands are a little bit moist, they're slicker than snot. I'll probably change those into something that's got a little bit more uh, texture to it. Probably something cool like stag or something, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, as far as I've, as much as I've shot it, it shoots great, shoots true. Like I said, I have, to have a tendency to pull left. But we're gonna see if I can keep from doing that because we gotta try for the gong. Oh, hey guys, well while you're here, go check out my Lou line of shirts. This is the Patriot line. I've got Jailblock Block Gym shirts, regular Gun Dungeon logo shirts, some cool stuff over there. Links in the description, check it out. I don't know why I continuously try to make a fool out of myself by not shooting at the gong first to find my holds before I start recording. That's not the way I do it. So I've not tried this at all. Don't know where the holds are. If I can see where it's hitting, I can make my adjustments. So let's see. Got the, the coated 38 specials in here. I pulled left. We're on. One out of five. Whew, that wasn't good. Let me try that again. Let's try again. I got those little powder puff wad cutters in here. Let's see how they do. Oh, shot way low. Ah, starting to think it ain't just me shooting left. I think the gun may be shooting just a little left. because There were some pretty good holds on that one. That round definitely shot way low, but I think that's about all I want to send up there. I'm making myself look stupid. So I struggled a little bit on the gong with this one, but let's be real. With these sights, <laughs> it's really tough to make any kind of adjustment up there on target especially if you're shooting low and you gotta go over the target because it just covers everything that you would see up there. Just for reference, hopefully you can see, that's what the sights looks like. Just cut into the frame for a rear and then just your typical blade front sight. As I said, this one might be shooting just a little bit left. I don't think it's all me after trying at the gong and hitting consistently in the same spot to the left. Uh, so it may be just need adjusted and really all you do to do that is just bend the sight, which 
to me, I'm not going to be taking, I'm not going to be shooting for 12 inch plates at 80 yards very often with this thing, just for you guys. The rest of the time is going to be spent smacking steel up close here, which is what is really enjoyable with this little thing. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, stay tuned.